Hi everybody, welcome to Old Guy's Garage. All right, so I was just going through the parts here. Got a dust shield and steering arms and brackets, and we have the the rotors and the calipers. So um, looking forward to getting these parts on, man. Big deal, big deal. Pretty damn excited. So, and man, oh man, what a difference that is. Look at that. Ain't that pretty? Alrighty, here's some of the tools that we used on applying the rotor and the disc brake parts on the 72 Cutlass. So this three-quarter inch wrench came in really handy, this ratcheting wrench, particularly on the bolts that went through the dust shield, the bracket, and the uh, steering arm. 15 16 wrench, there was an upper, an upper bolt that went through the caliper bracket and dust shield into the spindle. And then again, just regular three-quarter inch wrench. Um, I've got 17 sixteenths and three-eighths wrenches down here. I got a flared wrench as well for connecting the brake lines. Um, Skittle socket wrench here with nine sixteenths. I'm sorry, three-quarter deep and shallow sockets. Crescent wrench for the castle nut. Any kind of needle nose pliers for tweaking the cotter pin. The screwdriver here works good for a few instances that we needed it. Hammer, brake clean, tacky grease, and um, I can't forget um, we also needed a 9 16 wrench too that's not pictured. Um, that guy there um, was needed to connect the uh, brake line hose to the back of the caliper. And just a quick tip, you know it's getting colder in this neck of the woods. Um, this big cardboard has really come in handy to take some of the chill out of the floor. And if you have a lot of sitting around to do, you know, just getting a packing blanket and sitting on that really helps. You know, I've also got... Oh, where's he at? There he is. Sitting on that guy there also helps as well. So, just some quick tips. But that cardboard has been working out like a champ. All right, we're gonna get started here on the disc brakes. Oh, that might help. Okay. Let's get some of these bolts opened up. Got those. We're gonna get to these other parts later. Um, so we're really gonna get the dust shield on for now, this bracket on, and the steering arm. So that's what we're gonna work on now. All right, we're gonna get this dust shield on here first with the caliper bracket. It goes like that. This guy goes like that. And I do have a little heater running, so hopefully that's not too annoying. Okay. All right, so now I'm gonna get the steering arm the medium sized bolt here and the long bolt here. Okie dokie. So I'm gonna get this bolt. Get this bolt going. Use a longer bolt here. Put him on. Perfect. Okay. And then they're calling for these nuts. These nuts on the back side here. And let's see what these are. 
three quarters. Says low camera battery, even though I have this thing plugged in. So I am going to pause here and be right back. Okay, we've got these three quarter bolts through. I've got my socket wrench here. All right. Go ahead and start tightening these bad boys up. Ratcheting wrench. There we go. Put that guy on there. Get this guy on. And we're just gonna go to town. And we just about got it here. <clears throat> Turn it to the other side. We'll do the same thing with this guy. <clears throat> okay. And let's give this guy a shot. He must have been bigger than that. 15 sixteenths. Big boy. Just watch where your hands are going if you don't have gloves on. Okay. And then what they have you do is bend these guys. So see if we can't get that other one here. There we go. Okay. Okay, so we got this guy on. We're going to go to the next step. Final note back here. We do need to cut this bolt down. So as you can look at that hole, that's where your, that's where the bushings and stuff are going to be for your anti-sway bar. And as that rot this rotates, you know, that bolt is going to hit it. So we got to cut those guys down, and I'm going to cut them to the same distance as that other bolt. Looks like a quarter inch past the nut. Looking good. And there we go. A little touch up paint here and there. Dang, this thing looks good. All right, it's brake rotor time. So first thing I am going to do is use some handy dandy brake clean grab a rag and clean the rotor off. <clears throat> oh man, this stuff just goes everywhere. Holy cows. All right. Man, look at that nice new rotor. It's nice working with new parts. Not getting mud and dirt and grease and all kinds of stuff on my hands. For a while there, it was dirty for a while, long time. All 
right. So we're going to have to uh, seat the bearings in this bad boy. Okay. All right, let me grab what we need next. Okay, so got our bearings, large and small. The large one goes in the back, the small one goes in the front. Castle nut, center cap, washer, and I believe we're going to need a cotter pin. They gave us a, quite a few, so I'm going to take a few out here. I'm going to rest those up here. Okay, front bearing, rear bearing. Lay all my parts out. I'm going to put the parts back to the other side of the box. Okay. So, let's see what we got here. We know this big one goes back here. Alright. Let's grab him back out. Ooh, fancy, fancy. That's pretty slick. That is really something. Okay, so we got to grease these. So we're going to take a time out and we're going to grease these. Okay, how I've seen people do it is put grease in their palm like this. And they just roll the bearing in it. Get it nice and greasy. Mm-hmm. Get a little more. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, make sure he is good. Get all that grease out of my hand. Alright, I'm going to put him in like that. And next is, I'm going to cap him off with that. Okay, so we got our bearing in there. I'm going to add a little bit more of the good stuff. Next, what I've done here from my ball joint press kit, I've got this cap. And this cap fits this really nicely to help me punch this and seal the rear here. So, I'm going to set that in place. Set this cap on it. Say when it's down all the way, it'll have a uh, different sound. That's pretty solid. Okay. We're going to go ahead, put them on there, and get the bearing in the front. Let's just see how this looks. Okay. So yeah, we definitely need that bearing in the front there. So I'm going to back this guy off and put the bearing in the front. Alright, I'm going to get this next bearing here all greased up, ready to go in. So that guy's ready. Going to clean my hands here and work I'm gonna put the rotor on. There we go. Do, 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 do. Okay. Okay, he's back there. Bearing. No plastic, you don't get to go in there. Okay.
good. I just want to make sure there's enough in there. Okay. Got our washer. And our castle nut. Let's check the size here. Definitely bigger than 15 sixteenths. Okay, I just grabbed a good old crescent wrench. You don't really have to get this guy super tight anyways. Man, look at all these new parts. I am like so friggin' excited. This is so boss. Oh man, that feels so good. So it's pretty tight now, so I'm going to back it off. Just they say like an eighth of a turn. And then put the cotter pin in. I mean, I mean it's it goes nice, man. Look at that. So Okay. Grab me some pliers. Okay. And we get our cap here, put on. Alrighty, I'm gonna go around this with my screwdriver here. in. Man, I am just so stoked. Fantastic. This is awesome. This is awesome. Okay, time for the calipers. All right, I just pulled this out of the box. We've got our disc brakes in there, the pads, and where the hose is going to go, and our bolts. So we're going to disassemble this guy and get him on there. And he's even conveniently labeled far as left. How about that? There we go. All right, it says we got to install this guy. Put him on the caliper here. Okay, we got two copper washers. Okay, so it pretty much says one copper washer on the bottom. And one copper washer on the top. There we go. Okay, we're not going to tighten it until we get the whole caliper back on. All right, so I dry fitted the, uh, the caliper here just to kind of get a feel for it. It's a relatively tight fit between those two guys, but hey, that's a good thing. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead, put my first pad on here, okay, now this guy, let's see if we can get these both on at the same time, looking good so far. Fit in between this bracket. All right, so that's in now. So I'm going to leave him there. We got these two bolts. 
drive through the back side. And we'll do this top one. Alright. Bottom one started. So is the top one. Alright, so not gonna believe what I just found. Look at that beauty. Oh yeah. Alright. Oh man. World of difference. Alright, we go to the top one here. Alright. Got that, man. Look at that. Oh boy. I am excited. Big deal. Big friggin' deal. Alright, we're gonna do this guy next. So what I'm gonna do here is do this guy. I'm gonna move him over. Yeah, so he's gonna fit up in here. Just like that. Okay, so I just got back from AutoZone got these guys so thankfully they had them for some reason I couldn't find them in my kit I don't know if they're in the back of my trunk or not but I got a ton of parts in the trunk like a radiator and a whole bunch of other stuff and I just don't feel like rooting through it so we're gonna get this hose here taken care of let's see which way this slips on okay whoops runaway clip all right there we go Oh, that guy's in there. Good deal. All right, cool beans, man. That feels solid. Rock and roll. That looks great. All right, got to tighten this back bolt up. And uh, going to do the other side. So, probably 9 sixteenths. So 9 sixteenths bolt to tighten that up. And we're good to go to the other side. Fun stuff, man. All right, so there we have it. This guy's set to go. Going to um, do the other side now. So, um, and then once we get the discs on the other side, um, I'm gonna go to the steering linkage as the next. Redoing the steering linkage. I got all new steering linkage going on this baby. Got the disc brakes on the front here. Let's check out that other side. Oh man, look at that. Whoo! Whoops. <laughs> that is looking good. Man, that's looking good. Alrighty. Last thing I'm going to do here is come up here and get these guys finally connected. So, alrighty, I'm going to get these connected. Okay, just working it on getting this guy tightened up a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is get that front one in. A little bit of a tight squeeze here. Okay, he's in good enough. I'm going to start on that front one. This is one thing that I was always questioning. You can kind of see from this kit, it doesn't really look like that front line is in line with the other one. So we'll see how this goes. What I did on this guy, I loosened these top bolts up. Whoop. And then I took this one out completely to help me get this one seated. And then um, I'm just going to go through and tighten both of these up. Um, really makes me wonder if I need the bracket. You can kind of see where the bracket is at in relation to the, where these brake lines here were bent. So I'm going to tighten these guys down and, and we'll see if I still need that bracket. I've seen some pictures where guys even didn't even use this. What I did here, I did run both. Whoops, let me see if I can get a better picture. Yeah, I did run both, both, there they are. Both bolts through at the same time here 
and here. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, tighten these up. Alrighty, got those bolts tightened up. And actually, it came out pretty good. Um, I was kind of surprised. It's until I put these top top lines in, it just things just didn't look in alignment. So got some got a great view coming up for you here. Oh, let me get down. There we go. Man, doesn't that look good? Holy cow. Wow. Well, we're going to do the steering linkage next. Stay tuned.